All right, so in the first first part of the series, uh, these two videos, I talked about the difference between our dry clutch for our 300, 400 series from the 70s and 80s, and our wet clutch for the 425, uh, et cetera, up to the current models on the K91, K92 transaxle. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna break each one of these down in their individual components. So I'm gonna set the, uh, uh, wet clutch off to its side for just a second and we're going to break the um, the dry clutch down and so first we're going to do is we're going to move the three lock nuts um, there's three lock nuts that hold the pulley to the <coughs> main kind of uh, the electromagnet which is on here and the last one is up here there's springs on these uh, studs right here. The springs, they have the three lock nuts, um, and our springs basically serve to hold pressure on this entire system. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up this, and this is going to be, um, so this right here is our pulley that will have our belt on it. It does have a bearing in it. Um, you can see the bearing. So it's got the bearing right there, and I'm turning it. Um, and then back here, it has the clutch plate. This clutch plate right here attaches to um, this, the face of the rotor right here. Now, this right here is the coil. So the coil is where the electromagnetic force is generated from. The reason you have a coil and then you have the clutch plate over the top of the coil is because our clutch plate right here, if it, if it uh, directly contacted the rotor right here, um, what would happen, or if it directly contacted the electromagnetic magnetic, electromagnet, um, you would literally wear off the epoxy so fast, I don't think, think it would even last a minute. Probably one of the biggest things that you see over time is that this epoxy will wear off, or um, this will start to, to wear out and it'll actually wear into the epoxy face, which is never good. And so what happens is, this rotor right here is actually um, keyed to the shaft of the engine. So it's spinning like this as the engine's turning, so it's spinning, and what happens is, is when you turn the electromagnet on, um, the electromagnet magnetizes this clutch, uh, this rotor right here, which then grabs our plate right here, and stops this and basically links the two together. Now one of the things that you can actually see, and I know a, a lot of people talk about you know, when to engage stuff. Um, you know, that, that is up for you, it's a personal decision. Uh, all the manuals typically say you should do it at high RPMs. Um, that's the way I do it. Uh, seems kind of counterintuitive because you want to ease things into it. But realistically what you want to happen is you want this plate to grip very, very quickly. You want this plate right here to grip this face very, very quickly. You don't want any slippage. And what will happen is, is at low RPMs with a, with a lot of uh, a lot of rotational mass, you will actually cause slippage on this face right here um, from our, our clutch plate right there. That's why, you know, if you have a bigger deck, um, on a 420, 430, something like that, 60 inch deck, you might have some, you might have a little bit more wear on the surface than say a 318 with up to a 50 inch deck. So that is how a uh, electromagnetic clutch is put together. Uh, it is very important that when you put it back together, you will have to, what they call air gap it. Um, the air gap basically ensures that there is a point, either depending on the clutch system that you have, anywhere from a uh, 0 .018 to, or 0 .015 to a 0 .018 inch between this plate and this rotor. Uh, because if there's not, uh, there's a chance that the electromagnetic force is not strong enough to actually pick up the, or magnetize um, and pick up this uh, clutch plate. So that is how that system works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly put it back together. Anytime you take the, Anytime you take the, these clutches off of a machine, you do have to re-gap it. Gapping these is uh, pretty easy. In fact, I think there's a, um, 
if I can find it real quick. I think I have my feeler gauges out on the table here. So, you just all you have to do is use feeler gauges. Um, you're looking for 0 .018, 0 .017, 0 .018, and what you're going to do is there's three locations on this plate right here, um, and you're going to want to make sure that this is tightened down to where, if you can see in there, there's point there's 0 .018 inches between the plate moving. I don't know if you'll be able to see there or not, but the plate moving and the rotor face. So. That is how that works. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set the dry clutch aside and we're going to look at our wet clutch. So to look at our wet clutch, um, actually I need to clean my hands really quick before I get my wet clutch all dirty. So now I've got moderately clean gloves. So what we have to do is we've got clutch plates in here. So we're going to pull out our uh, gear right there that attaches to the main drive shaft. Um, the the main drive uh, main shaft will actually come right into this pull uh, into this gear right there. That leaves us with all these little uh, tooth clutch plates in here. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this first one out. My snap ring pliers are a little bit small for this job. We're going to see if we can do it. without sending a snap ring you know, around the around the shop or smacking me in the face or something. Okay, so this is the pressure plate right here. It's coming off. And I'm not going to disassemble this too far for fear of, of uh, losing springs and stuff like that. But there is a clutch plate in here. So you see these three little springs right there. Ah, crap. Didn't intend to take the whole shaft out. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying not to take this thing apart too far. Um, but what's going to happen in here... Crap. I'm not doing too hot. Now, that's how. Okay, so this is our clutch disc right here. Okay, typical clutch disc, um, just a much smaller form that you would you would find in. I, I want to put it down because I want to get it back in the correct orientation. Uh, but typical clutch disc that you would find in any uh, you know tractor, car, or whatnot. Um, and so what happens, and, and I've said this, and I said this in the K91 video, I went back and looked at it before I made this one. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to talk a little bit about how this system works and being a wet clutch system and, and uh, transaxle fluids and things like that. Um, since this is a wet clutch system, this plate right here has to, this clutch plate has to basically cause, have enough friction to bind or to, to, stop with that pressure plate right there. Same thing with this one. There's three total setups in there. What you don't want is you don't want these things slipping because if they slip it causes excess wear. Um, so what will happen, and here it is, I've got this all mixed up already. I think that's right. So what will happen is, and I think it'd be fine either way, realistically. Um, what will happen is if you don't have enough pressure on your clutch here, and you engage a heavy implement, this clutch plate right here will chatter against this pressure plate. And when it chatters against the pressure plate, it creates excess wear on this clutch ring right here. Which this thing, if you want to rebuild it, it's going to cost you two to three hundred dollars to rebuild it. And just with new plates and stuff. So it's better to go find a used unit, but still it takes you an additional, you know, about 10 hours worth of taking the, the transaxle out of the machine, taking it apart, putting it back together, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, um, how this system works is very similar to a car or anything like that. Um, just be really careful when you take it apart. Um, 
but that is what the insides are just three rings of these and when these press together it causes everything to uh, get back together here without having all the parts fall off um, so when they press together like this they're bound together or they're bound to, as I shoot springs everywhere Once they are bound together, then um, the PTO is operable. And I can't remember if I published it or not, but several, uh, a couple years ago, uh, I bent the drive shaft on my uh, 60 broom. And I just, that's probably the best representation of clutch chatter. Um, I need to go and pull, I, I need to see if I can find the raw, that raw video, and I don't know if it's on YouTube or not. Uh, but when I bent the drive shaft, you can actually hear the clutch make a did 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 sound uh, before it disengages itself. Um, and so it, that was not a fun experience because I ended up having to buy a new drive shaft. And uh, oh yeah, those things are expensive um, for the 60 broom, all caused by lack of grease uh, on a previous owner's part. This is where I pinch my finger or something, or a glove, one of the two. Got my glove stuck in there now. There we go. So now it's back together and I feel crap. Look at that. Spring's not in the correct spot. So I gotta take it all apart again. But um, that's uh, all about clutches that I want to talk about, kind of demonstrate the difference between the two systems. Um, while I'm doing this, I, can, I suppose I could give you some updates to things I'm doing around the shop. Um, I think you might have noticed, I think a couple of you already have based on the comments, um, that the shop is looking cleaner. Um, I got so busy this summer that I didn't have a chance to uh, do some of the stuff I normally like to do with regards to cleaning and whatnot for winter. Um, and so yes, the, the shop has definitely been a much, much bit of a pit um, this fall with all the videos. You know, normally in the, um, in the summer, there we go. Normally in the summer, um, so there are back assembled. I can put them back to where they belong. Uh, normally in the summer, you know, I try to, I do a lot of videos outside, I'm not in the shop that much, but um, yes, the shop is getting cleaner and selling a bunch of stuff, throwing a bunch of stuff away. Uh, we've got a dumpster and I basically filled up that dumpster last week. So, thanks for watching, thanks for all your support. I uh, appreciate all the comments and everything and I really enjoy making these videos. And uh, I wait till the next one, it'll be two more days. Thanks for watching.